This one up here? You can, it's all on. Will it cause crazy feedback if I use them both? Nope. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> okay, hope you enjoyed your meal. It was very lovely. We are Team Grubs, which is our fancy acronym for Goretzky, Reckinger, Urban, and Bosworth Space Shuttle Simulators. This is our final design review for the TASM Shuttle Simulator project that we've been working on since about November. Statement of work. Uh, the purpose of our project was to refurbish the provided space shuttle cockpit interior into a fully functional space shuttle flight simulator. Uh, the project that we were specifically tasked with was the internals, uh, interior of the shuttle cockpit and didn't include any of the external. Uh, there's like a whole exhibit that's, that's going to be put together. Um, our project was for the inside and it included the visuals, haptics, the control system, the simulation. Um, we included some LED lighting and stuff like that. Um, the project deadline is obviously, you know, by the end of this class, but in reality, uh, it's 14 May of 2022. That's when the ribbon cutting is gonna be for the exhibit. And shortly thereafter, um, it will be open to the public. So we have a very hard deadline. That's why we got started a little sooner than some of the other teams did. Uh, introduction to our customer. Uh, the Tulsa Air and Space Museum is a local aeronautics museum located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, they opened in 1998, and since then they've been providing an interactive, educational, and enjoyable experience to about 60,000 visitors a year. Um, and of those visitors, about 35,000 are children. Um, also, we work with Simstar on this project. It's a world, they're a world-class aircraft simulation manufacturer. Um, starting in 2003, Simstar has been providing uh, aircraft simulators for both private uh, and government use. Here's the team. Uh, I am Benjamin Bosworth. I was the team lead. My primary responsibilities included overall system design, uh, procurement of all the necessary components that we needed. Uh, ooh, nice. Um, and also, and also communicating with our customer and any intermediaries. And also, my name is Brett Reckinger, and I am the testing engineer, and I'm in charge of all the documentation for this project. My name is Jude Urban, and I am in charge of all the software surrounding the exhibit. And I'm Carter Goretzky, the manufacturing engineer for this project. Here we have a list of some of the critical requirements. We actually have 19 requirements in total. These ones were identified as being critical requirements because they're drivers for the project. And what we mean by that is the majority of the other requirements kind of center around these and support these, uh, it, these particular requirements. The first one, as you can see here, is that the cockpit of the craft shall, shall include two independent stations. Um, what that means is that there will be two users can use it simultaneously, independently of one another. Uh, this will help to improve the volume of people that can get to experience the exhibit, uh, provided that it is in a museum, you have a school bus full of children come through, you want to get as many through as you can. Um, we also wanted to follow all applicable OSHA guidelines, um, because this is an exhibit that's going to be open to the public. We want to share a safe uh, and enjoyable experience for museum guests. The three that you see listed here have to do with uh, exposed wiring, stair depth, um, and our tread depth and stair height. Uh, another one that you see here is in regard to the simulation, and this falls in kind of in line with requirement number one, um, ensuring that we can get a good volume of people through. We wanted this simulation to last under 120 seconds. And the last one you see is in, in regard to the hard deadline. This was a driver for most of our uh, major milestones throughout the course of the semester. So before we get into technical aspects of the project, I'd like to give you all an experience as if you were walking up to the exhibit for the very first time. So on the top row, you can see uh, two images. These images will be displayed on either monitor. Um, so on the very top left, you can see this is a joystick instruction image. This is the joystick actually used in the exhibit. And it just instructs the user on how to operate the exhibit. You can see uh, there's two buttons. There's a begin mission button and a deploy a drag shoot button. Um, and then on the right side, you can see a target. This is a recommended landing location. And then once you press the begin mission button, you can descend, you, you'll see a heads up display view um, of the shuttle as you descend into Edwards Air Force Base. And then upon landing, um, the user, like I mentioned, has the option to deploy the drag chute. Um, so now that we've given you guys a little bit of an experience, um, I'd like to break down a few of the technical aspects of the project. So the main flight simulation technology was developed by X.11, um, uh, developed by Laminar Research. It allows for plug-in development. Uh, and because of that, you can see this. Uh, this is a, a symbol for a Python script. So this is the plug-in that actually runs the exhibit. 
uh, uses an altitude-based state machine. And then from that Python script, uh, this Python script uh, displays two full screen images. And then right here, this Arduino, that is actually what um, controls the LEDs. So even though the LEDs were not a direct requirement for the exhibit, we wanted to go above and beyond. Uh, and so we decided to include the LEDs. In total, two Python scripts, one Arduino sketch, and 800 lines of code. As I mentioned, the main plugin um, runs something that I call an altitude-based state machine, which is exactly what you would expect. So in phase one, that's actually a little circle, but um, projector isn't too great tonight. Um, it runs uh, something I call phase one. So on, the, on this box right here, you can see a few of the things that it does. So it resets all the shuttle control sur surfaces, pauses simulation, turns the LEDs in the cockpit white, and then also display, displays the two full screen images that you saw. And then the time difference between phase one and phase two is technically infinity until the user presses the begin mission button. And when the user does, it clears the full screen images, resumes the simulation, and then the user can descend into Edwards Air Force Base. And then about 5,000 feet, I deploy the landing gear, deploy the speed brakes, and then at about 100 feet, I start looking for a landing or crash. And upon a landing or a crash, I turn the LEDs red or green, depending on whether the landing was successful or not. Most of the time it's not. Uh, I enable the brakes, perform a little camera sequence, I reset the state machine, and then reload all the world parameters. After a little bit of a time delay, I return to phase one and execute all those things again. Here's a manufacturing plan that we developed throughout the semester in order to track our progress. They split into three different phases. Phase one, representing alterations we're making to the actual shuttle itself. Phase two, representing the construction of key components that we wanted to complete. And phase three, representing the quality of life and just on fine, just, uh, fine adjustments we wanted to make to the different components. Additionally, we added three more tasks throughout the year that we found that were needed, kind of touching on what Jude said before, one of those being the LED controller. Here are some of the key components that we created throughout the year. They all kind of are in and around the center console, being the seat, butt kicker, and the joystick set amps. The seat itself is where the user is going to be sitting in order to reach that joystick and actually control the simulation. While they're on there, the butt kicker will be shaking their seat with haptic feedback, which just vibrates it, makes you feel like you're inside the shuttle, and kind of when the landing gear shoots out, it's shaking you, it's making that experience just bigger for the user. Next, here is the LED strip that we made goes inside this box and feeds up into the top of the exhibit, which will give you multiple different colors, being white for the instruction screen, blue for while you're in flight, red for a crash, and green during a successful landing. Each of these provides that extra sensory feedback for the user and kind of makes the experience complete. Here's the final prototype. It keeps everything from the previous slides onto there, and additionally adds speakers, fans, an inner frame, and the monitors. And this is the before and after from November up until now. So when it was just an aluminum framework and plywood into new flooring, new seats, new panels, the monitors, everything is completely brand new. And additionally, we added stairs to that front of the exhibit, which you can see there. All right, so this is our one line diagram for the exhibit. This represents one independent station. And as you see, everything basically powered from the outlets and each cable it has its own label and color scheme associated to it, as you can see in this table here to the left. Uh, this is just to help the museum volunteers reference this in the future, because there are actually tags on these cables, so that if they need to replace a component, they can reference this at any time. So, you can barely see this, <laughs> but this is our test plan, and similar to the manufacturing plan, it's broken up into three phases, and what we're testing for is, we're testing the components, uh, such as the electronic components, say the manufacturing components, as well as the simulation itself. And we actually broke the test into four categories, performance requirements, just making sure that the project actually meets all the requirements set by our customer. Then we have safety of the user, which we wanted to test, uh, durability of the product, and just user surveys, just for feedback from um, just random users. So here's a complete list of all of our uh, tests that we've conducted, and so far we've completed all of them. There's a total of 21, and most of them, as you can see here, are revolving around the simulation. 
So I just want to dive into some of the testing for the simulation itself. So we wanted to meet some requirements, such as is it repeatable, and we actually ran this 40 plus times, we kind of lost count. But just to make sure that it is uh, durable and we can run it without having any bugs. Um, and then we have success and failure feedback. We do, we have two types of feedback. We have visual, audio, and haptic feedback. Uh, for controlling the pitch of the aircraft, you can do that as well as you can control the roll. We, that was just an additional feature that we added. And then for average runtime, we needed to be uh, under 120 seconds. And we actually gathered a pool of um, individuals, uh, the team, the museum volunteers, and museum visitors, and we plotted on this graph, and we actually got an average runtime of around 89.9 seconds. We do have some outliers that are above 120 seconds, but uh, consulting with our customer, this is okay since the average was under 120 seconds by quite a bit. And so those are our main requirements. And then the last one here is our light, light transition accuracy. Uh, we actually had issues with this previously. We had around 60%, but we actually fixed this up and we got it up to 100%. So every time it goes from white to blue to red or green, we actually haven't witnessed a mistransition yet. So we're doing very well with that. Moving on to a project summary. Uh, currently we've, out, we've used about 761 hours uh, for this project of the 761 that were allocated for the project, uh, meaning that we've now expended all of our budgeted time. Um, we also have total spending of $7,028, which is 70, about 70% 70 of our, our allowed budget, um, which is great. 100% um, of drawings have been completed. I think we had like 21 drawings. This includes uh, 3D models, manufacturing drawings, some system sketches, um, and stuff like that. 18 out of 18 requirements have currently been met. Um, and overall, I think that we've done a good job in designing and constructing an interactive uh, educational and a fun exhibit uh, that will be enjoyed by thousands of visitors uh, to the Tulsa Air and Space Museum every year. And in regard to the budget, um, since we did have some money left over, we decided to go ahead and expend some of that leftover money to purchase uh, spare components for some of the stuff that is most likely to get destroyed. Um, I say destroyed or malfunction, um, primarily being like the joystick. I mean, you're going to have children using this, and we all know that children are going to go in there and, and crank on the thing. And, and so we wanted to make sure that we have as many extras on hand uh, as, as we could. So I think that that was a great, great thing to do. Uh, we'll see if our video works. And look at that. It's not working. It's, it's, it's jumping around. Here we have two wonderful uh, volunteers slash test subjects. Um, running the simulation. Uh, this is actually how it looks inside the museum currently. Uh, as you can see, now that they've started their descent into Edwards Air Force Base, the LEDs have transitioned to blue. Um, and they're cruising along here, having a great time. You can't see their faces, but trust me, they're just really having a great time. Uh, the user on the right has crashed, as you can tell by the red LEDs. Um, you know, good try though, had fun, that's what matters. Uh, left side user is coming in really fast and really steep, which of course results in a crash, red lights uh, signifying um, not necessarily a failure because we had fun and that's the point, right? Um, are there any questions? Isaac, yes. <laughs> Mm, yes, yes, it did, absolutely. The paint color was something that we deliberated over in depth for many hours, um, and it is black. <laughs> oh yeah, and we have a demo set up if you care to. It's not quite as fun as, as it is in the exhibit. We don't have the butt kicker, but Jude will stand behind it and shake the seat, so you get kind of the same thing. 